everyone, it's Hazy Simmer. I am so excited because today I am playing the Extreme Ultimate Decades Challenge. Today's episode is going to be year 1310. And if you guys watched, if you're one of my regulars, you saw all the drama that happened in 1309. It was a very heavy year with so much happening. I'm also so excited you guys liked the different style of editing. Um, I think you could tell through the year 1309, I kind of was testing out like cinematic, and then in the middle, because it took me three days to record that episode, so like each time I tried it and towards the end, I really got the hang of it and it was during our biggest moment ever, which was so exciting. Um, so I'm going to use that more in my storytelling and I'm really looking forward to sharing that with you guys because it's going to help me keep in contact the world we're building and giving you guys those like, where are they now? What are they doing now while we can still play our, play our main household? So I'm super excited you guys enjoyed that. I was really nervous and it took me a long time to figure it out and it's still very amateur, but I'm so glad you guys loved it. I am loving all the feedback about uh, what happened in the family and we will get into that more this episode. I was originally saving those events for this episode but I decided I wanted them to happen in the year 1309 because I felt like it all made sense and I don't want to in the decade on what happened in the last episode. I kind of want to ended on the aftermath of what happened because uh, going into 1311 uh, the new decade we're going to be rebuilding. So I kind of like the idea of like, instead of leaving on a cliffhanger, we leave on um, a restart. A re you know what I mean? So I hope you guys like that. And uh, we're going to get into today's episode. So at some point last year, I totally must have missed a notification, but it looks like um, Ophelia and Connor had another baby and it was a baby girl and her name is Elisha. Uh, Eliza, sorry. Uh, so her name is Eliza. Um, so we're going to roll for them. So um, they are not immune to our rolling. Um, now I did say that his other children had a lower percentage of dying from their toddlerhood because they grew up in the castle. Um, but they are now all in the yeah, so they're now all in the Abbey, so they have a higher ch chance of getting sick again. Um, so they're back to the normal uh, roles because they had, uh, you know, they're just in a more communicable area and there's a lot of in and out traffic. And as for births, there is no um, less of a chance for births. So I'm going to go ahead and get the D die out or giving birth. Okay, so she survives birth again. So that's awesome. And for um, newborns, it is um, 5, 10, 15, 20. All right, so our baby makes it, but also it, it's time for her to age up into an infant. So Eliza, uh, 12, 16, 18. So we have baby Eliza, and we're going to go ahead and age her up. It's really hard for me to zoom in on this lot, so I am just going to do that from a distance. But um, there has been more work done here. Connor officially did get this room. Oh, look, it is her birthday. So we are absolutely on time. That was so perfect that I came to this household first. But um, this whole expansion has been added. I know it's not like super fancy or anything. It's meant for like traveling, visiting royal nobilities and um, anyone like that. If you guys wanted to see what that looked like, we have a lot of Tamara's art in here. There's other local artists um, who he he also supported because Tamara can only make a certain amount of um, tapestries in a year and rugs in a year and I think I only paid her for three or four so some of these were done by other people um, in the kingdom as well and some but they're all local because um, that was when Connor was instructed with this expansion um, he made sure he wanted to support our kingdom and not import any business so yeah that took a whole year to do because it is literally like an extension onto the building uh, because that whole area was open and then he added some more things so that's what connor has been doing um but they are coming down to the close at the end of 1310 connor will no longer be staying at the abbey and he'll have done all the work that he was meant to do he has done a lot of work for the abbey and you know it's going to be more of a generational thing um than one a lifetime of uh, getting it all worked out because I just can't be bothered to build all this in one for one family storyline so I like the idea of it being a generational thing <laughs> I'm gonna be really honest with you guys I 
am so annoyed at myself for putting this ugly skin detail on <laughs> Ashton that every time I look at him, I think he looks like Squidward. Uh, and I hated the way he looked, so I'm going to change the way he looks. Um, but I did want to talk while I'm in cast. Um, I wanted to tell you guys what my plan is. So, you know, Ashton aged up mean. Um, and I said that's probably because he grew up in the castle and he just kind of felt inferior uh, to the royalties and may, like maybe the royal family kind of. So I was thinking maybe Augustine had a crush on Christine because they were kind of raised together. And maybe that's why um, Lady uh, Tiara ran away because she is betrothed to Prince Augustine. And now she's got a crush on our son, Frederick, and our main older household. So I was like, just kind of thinking like about that. But I do know Augustine takes his father really seriously when it comes to, um, so I know Augustine takes his father really seriously when it comes to their, the threat of their line. So even though Augustine may have a crush on, um, Okay, so they didn't have a daughter. It was a son. His name was Elijah, but the way it was spelled, I thought it was a girl. So I did change it just because I do not want to get confused because this is the most Sims I have ever kept track with, and it is honestly super intense. It's winter time, so I'm just putting this on him. But this is what he looks like. He's super adorable. I do need a screenshot for um, the family tree, which I'm sure I've missed some of the kids. Um, I'm sure I've missed some of the kids' screenshots, but I've been trying really hard not to. Um, but yeah, so I think the story is going to be that um, I think that Prince Augustine has a crush on Christine. I'm not sure how that's going to play out, but I do know that he takes his father very seriously when it comes to the threat to their line. Um, so I'm thinking that he really wouldn't... Like, I'm just getting the vibe that he wouldn't um, ruin that bond. But yeah, I mean, I, re I did re originally think that maybe Prince Augustine grew up really close to Christine and um, Ashton, and he bullied Ashton, but he had a crush on Christine, and maybe that's why Ashton doesn't like him, is what I was thinking. But after playing 1309, um, you know, and having the talk with the king and James and Augustine, who are the princes, Augustine and James are the princes, and the king, you know, telling them, like, how important it is that they do not have a threat to their line. I don't know if Augustine would um, continue having a crush or, but he is a child. So, so, um, Christine and Ashton are going after the winter time, which um, the winter's last day is tomorrow the spring, they're going to go to the castle because Ashton is a cupbearer for the king. And he, they, you know, the kids do go back to their families in the winter time just because uh, the winter time is just the hardest time of the year. So it's kind of easier to, if the kingdom kind of isolates, other than that big archery competition, it's really a family time of the year where you just stay with your family. Uh, so the castle kind of runs on less staff. And then the working classes, you know, kind of Unless you live in the castle, you go back to your family's home. So, um, as we said before, but like I was saying before, um, Christine is uh, learning how to read and stuff like that in the castle. Or she got to take classes with the prince. And um, the mother, I decided instead of her working in the kitchen, that the queen has her uh, essentially replacing her mother's role. She's learning how to take care of children. Christine is helping the Princess Josephine with her children. Uh, mind you, Christine is just a child. I think uh, she might be age 10 now. So there's only so much she can do, but she can help the um, nursing staff, essentially, like the ones who take care of the kids, the nannies and stuff like that. She can help them by doing uh, basic needs and um, care of basic things like taking out the trash, um, helping change diapers, um, reading to the children because they did teach Christine how to read. I think she performs puppetry shows for the children. Um, so she's essentially meant to be like a babysitter for the children until she can learn to be like become a midwife for the royal family and take care of kids and all that. Um, she would essentially grow up to be like a wet nurse without um being like the the one who breastfeeds them she'll just essentially be a um yeah just a nanny but i don't know if that what term they used for that back then it's kind of annoying me 
because I can't think of it, but she's training to be a major part of taking care of the royal family's children. So just like her mom. So um so Christine has a festering grudge with Ashton. And I wonder if it's because Ashton keeps telling her, like, he's never going to be with you. You're a peasant just like me. You're my twin. You're just like me. Um, He's not going to be with you. He's a prince. But I think she has a big crush, crush on Prince Augustine. And they definitely are buddy-buddy because we know that upset Tiara when she was visiting the castle. So when she came to the mainland, she ran away and spent the day with our peasant family, um, the main alder household. So we do know that there's something going on there, but we're going to explore that more this episode. Um, but yeah, after tomorrow, they're going to go stay in the castle. So we'll be checking in on them. Um, so I just really came over here to check on Connor and see what's going on with all them. So I'm going to pop out and go to our main household. So I did want to tell you that Father Brewer is not giving um, KDN his last name. He is going to be forced to take a bastard's last name, and we're doing very much like Game of Thrones. So instead of it being about your region you're from, um, like how in Game of Thrones his like, last name is Snow because he is a uh, bastard from the north, um, he is going to have a title of his mother um, because bastards, you know, like the guys don't have to claim they're bastards. So... His mother's a spellcaster, so KDN's last name is going to be Caster. Like, if you're a bastard of a blacksmith, your last name will be Smith, and so on and so forth. Like, I'm going to make a list, and I'll share that with you guys in my recap video. just wanted to touch on that, that um, KDN's last name is not Alder, because he's a bastard, and it's not Brewer, even though Father Brewer is raising him and actually does love him, even though he is so angry with his wife. He does. He loves children. He is a good person. He's just spiteful because he was cheated on. Um, but he is a good person. Like, um, so he loves children and he's taking care of the child. He doesn't resent the child for existing because obviously the watcher wanted him to be here. Um, but he is upset with his wife that she couldn't resist the temptation of hurting him. Um, I know you guys all want to know what's going on with her, but we'll get in there. Pascal had a baby. So we're actually going to look at the baby and cast. And I have, oh, her name is Yvette. Uh, so so we absolutely will be starting every episode off with um, checking on our other households. And then that way we can go to our main household for the meat of the episode. And then towards the end, we'll do like a what's going on in the world kind of vibe. So this is little Yvette Gilmore. And I'm so excited we got to check on her and see what she looks like. All right, so if you just saw the prince is arguing with his new wife, Princess Josephine of Moria, and he is deeply upset that he not only doesn't have a son, that he has two daughters instead, and they are his firstborn children. She swore to him that her healers, her, like all her doctors are saying that she is, ha like she was having sons. And not only that, like he was telling her that he thinks that she is ugly like he can't believe his parents got him this horrible wife um from this country who just you know to him he does not respect their alliance even though moria is an amazing country with so many resources and so many allies and technically um we are not we're not a new kingdom but this is a new monarchy only like i said he will be the fourth generation king so it is fairly new we're not even halfway through a, like a legacy you know what i mean so he is very angry with her they do not have a great relationship um but they do have to keep trying for a child so they are going to 
um, try again. But he's telling her, like, I need a male heir. And she's like, I don't want to do that. Like, I am just healing from birth. And he's, like, demanding that she give him an heir and, or that he's going to break off the marriage and marry somebody else. And while he doesn't have that right, um, you know, at the end of the day, she was always trained to be a queen and to run their household and to produce heirs. And that's kind of it um, because she's not like the heir in her own kingdom. Um, so she's just a political pawn, essentially. So, um, yeah, she has to give him a male heir and they have to try again. Okay, so if you guys just saw, Princess Eleanor came to check in on her kids, and she saw a strange woman who is all white and definitely spellcaster, speaking in another language to her children, casting spells on them um, mid, casting spells on them as soon as she came in, um, she was startled, and Princess Eleanor was asking, the so Princess Eleanor was asking, you know, like, who are you? What are you doing to my children? Like, what do you want? And she screams, you know, and then the lady yeah, then the lady um, disappears and transports herself somewhere else. So Princess Eleanor is terrified for her children and their safety. So she is going to talk to Roderick about that. So yeah, she's coming down to tell uh, Roderick about what happened. Roderick is just in his uh, study practicing his magic. Um, he is always working on his magic skills and his, growing his abilities because he is the oldest um, child of his father, Lord Mortimer, and he has a lot of responsibility to make sure the Merlin line continues to grow and uh, prosper. So it's very important for him to, you know, not lose any of that knowledge that was passed down. But um, yeah, Eleanor is about to come talk to him. So she's telling her husband how scared she is that she found an intruder in their house and she cannot believe what is happening. She wants to leave immediately and she is actually asking if they could go stay with his parents because she would be a lot safer and the kids would be a lot safer in their um house because they live in an ancient castle um so i think he is going to definitely talk to his father about that because he needs his children to be safe um this woman they found was um hovering over so she walked into this woman in her children's nursery and she was talking to Adelaide in a foreign language. And I think he is saying there's a chance she is speaking the native tongue. But yeah, sort of like, you know, how like ancient magic is written in Latin. She is probably speaking in a very ancient language. And he is just she's describing like she's all white. Her eyes are all white. Her hair is all white and it's long. And she's just so Eleanor is telling him like, if you would have seen this woman, you would have known she was definitely surreal and not of this earth. And Eleanor is like, you know, what are, what is happening to our family? I want to keep us safe. Like, what can we do, Roderick? And she's really leaning on him in this time of her fear um, because they just gave birth to their son. And she's going to start dressing in the Gothic family house colors, which are like a very dark blood red, I mean, a uh, burgundy reddish color. I know this is kind of brown, but I think it does work. Um, I also know her hair clips, but I really, I just, I don't know what to do. Okay, so I'm going to change her to more of a headpiece like this. It clips a little bit. I did have a hat slider in the game, and it, it just wasn't working. But yeah, I think we're going to keep this for her appearance, and we're going to adjust the color of her dress a little bit so she's more in line with the goth family colors. Aramir. So we're going to name him Aramir. Um, this is from Lord of the Rings and I really liked it. So um, we're going to get him into the story now. Okay. So yeah, I do think we're going to leave the princess and Lord Roderick here. 
Um, the town is so beautiful on a snowy day. I don't know what glitch is happening. Okay. Yeah, so the town is so beautiful on the snowy day. And I think we're going to leave uh, the princess and Lord Roderick here. Okay, so I was about to leave the princess and them, and then I just noticed that Tiara is at our house. So we definitely need to talk to our sister and um, see what's going on and see why she's visiting. It could be something serious about our dad or our family. So we're going to check in because it's nine o'clock at night and she's here. Like this is a this is a big deal. I'm going to have uh, Roderick come out and talk to his sister because, you know, when she was a child, like she was a toddler when he got married so um you know they really didn't live together for a long time so i just it's really surprising that she's here okay so he's greeting his sister and checking in he's asking like how's the family like what are you doing or is everything okay and i think she is going to tell him that she is worried about their dad um he has not been okay since the archery tournament um, he's kind of been acting a little like just different and she, yeah. So if you guys remember the archery tournament, Mortimer was running around terrified. And I think she's explaining, like, I think there's something wrong with dad. He has been acting very off since the archery tournament. I think Roderick's telling her like, I think everything's okay. Come on in. You need to have a good place to rest your head at night. Like, oh, Lord Roderick just aged up too. Okay. And Lord Roderick just aged up in the middle of all that and he is good. So we're gonna pick the knowledge aspiration and do a spellcaster for him. So happy birthday to him. Yeah, he looks really happy about that. Okay, so not only did he just, it, he was a teen, and he just aged up to an adult, he just aged up to a young adult, and now he's just aged up to an adult at the same t day, and I have no idea how this happened. You guys, he just aged up to an elder. Clearly, this is a glitch. But I think I'm going to use it in the story. Hang on. So like we just saw, Lord Roderick just aged up into an elder. He went from a teen, like 18 years old, to an elder. And look who's outside. Her, her name is Adrella Vladimir. Um, we know she's a spellcaster. We don't really know too much about her yet, or you guys don't. Um, but yeah, she is outside. And our Lord Roderick has just aged up. Lord Roderick is having an aging glitch. And it says, this mysterious uh, spellcaster is outside our house and Lord Roderick is perpetually aging up non-stop he has just aged up four times in a row which is kind of crazy because he is he was a young adult and now he is an elder and i am going to roll with that in the story um number one it's exciting like what the heck is happening but number two like it adds layers to the story i'm trying to tell anyway so tiara came over to say to our brother like i think there's something going on with dad like something's wrong he's been weird since the um tournament and I don't know what's going on with him but he's not acting like his himself and as soon as Lord Roderick invited his sister into the house he started to age rapidly and outside of the house we have the spellcaster who uh, was over our children earlier her name is Adrella Vladimir and um, she's been outside doing magic ag against our family this whole time 
She has come in to officially introduce herself. And she is challenging him to a magical duel because she has... So somehow she has rapidly aged up um, Roderick and she has now challenged him to a magical duel. And I'm just checking Eleanor because she was the same age as Roderick. She had seven days to age up. So so he would have uh, had, they, she had two kids, so that would have extended it. So yeah, today would have been his birthday. So there's definitely a glitch. And after this, I will turn aging off, but we're going to use it for storytelling. And okay, and now we're going to watch the magical duel and see what happens. Okay, the battle is done. Oh, guys. Oh, my gosh. So we've lost Lord Roderick, Monomer, um, Monomer's son. So we lost Lord uh, Roderick Gothic, Monomer's son. His daughter's tiara is talking to this mysterious lady who just aged him up. Like, she just rapidly aged him, battled him, and killed him. And tiara is talking to her. Um, tiara is literally the bravest person in the world. But yeah, I think that Tiara is threatening to fight this woman. And she was like, don't worry, I'll be back for the gothic line. Um, tiara literally came here to warn Roderick about something going on with her dad and now Roderick's dead um it seems like Tiara is the only one aware of what's going on now so I think she is going to try to get home safely but Eleanor is here with the babies uh the little princess and the little prince where is Eleanor her heart is um, but Eleanor is absolutely devastated because she had just asked her husband, who apparently is talking to us from the grave, but she just asked her husband to take her away and the kids away because she is living in fear and now she is all alone. And she's got her kids who are a target by her father. There's death in the background, holy crap. But her kids are like, they have... Her father is not an ally because she had given birth to gothic kids. Um, and death is making a snowman because he just wants to cheer her up, I guess. Oh, yeah. Okay, so this is all really heavy. But she did ask, you know, her husband to take her away to her his parents' house and keep them safe. Um, but now she's all alone and... Um, I'm sure she's going to have to summon her guard. They do have guards. I just didn't want to take up more spots in the household. But just imagine that they have guards like that live in a little apartment in the house. Um, so she's going to, or maybe down the street. Um, but she's going to have to summon her guards to help her out. So that was really heavy and I wasn't expecting any of that to happen. 